Well, hello there, everybody. It's Sally Cathcart here from the Curious Piano Teachers, and welcome to another Tuesday Teaching Tips. Now, today, I thought I would just take you through the preparation that I do when I want to introduce a pupil students to a new piece of music. And this is going to be my aim with these pieces for my students is that they're going to be able to play these to perform these pieces ultimately confidently expressively musically etc so i'm not teaching this piece specifically to work on their notation or even to work on their rhythm um, or other aspects but it is more the expressive side of things so um the the rhythm notation that will all improve um as a matter of course but that's that's not my primary aim and that's really important so these are the steps that I would go through and I think as teachers it's our job really to break it all down it's my job anyhow I, that's how I feel to break down a piece to make it really manageable so the students can do it step by step and those of you that have been following the curious piano teachers for many years will know that this is one of our primary aims to break the learning down both for ourselves as teachers but specifically for our pupils in this kind of situation which is why I've got Ed my curious elephant out today because he how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time so how would i go about preparing this piece so as a teacher i need to first of all play it through so i need to know it here's a piece a, a piece that i'm working on at the moment i'm just about to introduce it to some students this afternoon they've already heard the piece they've selected it so now how am i going to go about it so here we go this is the piece it's called The Chase or The Hunt and it's by Gurlitt from Opus 117. So that's already taught me something that the second time it's different from the first time so I play through the piece first and then what I want to do for myself is to establish a basic sense of the piece and I need to analyze it many many years ago I used to just play through the piece and then I'd throw it in front of the pupil and I would learn the piece along with the pupil but nowadays I don't do that any longer because really that's not the best way so now I need to analyse it, some basic analysis. So I would look at the key signature, okay, C major, that's quite straightforward. I'm going to look at the time signature, it's 3, 4, okay, that's good to know. I always like to know how many bars has the piece got. I've counted them through, I've got my bar numbers, it's got 32. That tells me quite a bit as well. And then I also want to consider the phrases and what, what, what the phrase structure is. So let's just look through that. So I'm going to label this. To me, this is a really crucial part of understanding the piece. So we have A. And I'm going to call this B. Okay? Different rhythm and it moves on a bit. And it finishes with a different chord. And then the next section. Okay, this is similar to A with the rhythm. Similar pattern. It's just slightly different because of the chord. So I'm going to call this A1. And then... This is the same as B, so I'm going to call that B1. And then, new, new idea. C. And then, A1. C again. B1 again. And very quickly, I can see I have A, B and C. Those are the three main ideas. Well, that makes it a lot easier to teach than 32 bars. So I've looked at the big analysis, kind of the big picture. I'm going to look at a bit more detail now. So for example, rhythmic elements. I know it's in 3-4. However, I can see that, um, and I'm already playing, my 3-4 very much as a one in a bar. Because to me, that sounds like the chase. It sounds like the hunting horns going and stuff like that. Um, and I, I, that, that's going to be quite tricky, I think, for a student of this elementary grade one-ish level. 
it's also got an upbeat well that's going to be interesting to get that upbeat really secure if I make a big thing of the upbeat then it probably won't be an upbeat any longer so I'm going to have to think my way through that what I could do is start by doing this maybe that's a place to start with the students so they actually start on the beat and then the upbeat's really easy um, so that's some of the rhythmic features along with the rests and things uh, and then melodic features okay so the melodic and the harmonic features I think go together really the piece is just consists of chord one and chord five tonic and dominant well that's great because a lot of my students have been working on their tonic and dominant so we can do lots and lots of listening where I'm just getting them to stand up sit down I think we did the same sort of thing last week with uh, in the Tuesday teaching tips when they hear chord five I might say stand up when they hear chord one sit down chord five or stand up here we go let's give it a go off we go So it's just one and five, really, really straightforward in that respect. But getting that idea over, I can do it through lots and lots of listening. And of course, every time I play, the student is beginning to hear the piece. They're hearing it played musically. They're building up their oral image of the piece, their mental image, their oral image. Now, I know some teachers say, well, then they're not learning the piece. That's why I said at the beginning, the point of this is for them to be able to play, perform the piece confidently, expressively, fluently, musically. Yeah, I'm not using this as a let's practice your note reading. They will be practicing it on the back of this in different ways. However, the purpose is for them to build up this really strong mental image of or oral image of this piece. OK, so we've looked at the rhythmic, the melodic and the harmonic elements of that. And I want to look at one other thing, really. And this is all before I bring it to the pupil. And that is the technical aspects of it. There's nothing too complicated about this in terms of the coordination between the hands. It comes on the beat. There's no um, syncopation or anything of that sort. Um, we've got chord 5-7, so I'm going to have to watch out for the students that make sure that when they play these chords that they're not tensing up their hand like this, but they're always using a lovely arm and a, a nice loose wrist to help that. And the same with the right hand. You know, notice I'm not sitting on the key and doing that. It's a different feel altogether. I'm using the arm. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, round, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down. Okay, so it all has this lovely fluid sense to it. And then the last thing I would consider before I even do anything with the pupil is think well okay how am I going to present this to them and introduce it to them in musical ways that really really get them listening I've given a few hints along the way um, I would probably uh, play it through to them with first of all maybe an, um, a think about the rhythm and maybe I might use some body percussion so they could well do something like ee, bum, bum. Bum, bum. And I would go slower da, da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba. and then I, I might actually just reduce that to the clapping and then we get the one in the bar da, da, da. if it's in a face-to-face -face lesson then they might go galloping all the way around the room who knows certainly some movement would be really good if you're not in face-to-face -face online then body percussion definitely is a good feature to do We've already talked about the standing up and the sitting down um, for the chord one and chord five, getting them hearing that. Um, and of course, we might then do a bit of improvisation as well. I might do... Da -dum, da -dum. Excuse the out-of-tune piano up there. But just something using the little elements of the piece that are going to really bring it to life so that by the time they come to start to practice the piece 
they already have a really strong oral image of the piece in their head. So that's the steps that I go through when I'm going to introduce a student to a new piece. The most important thing is that I have to look at that piece. I have to analyse it. I have to know what the piece consists of. Join me again next week because I will do the same sort of thing, but with a more advanced piece. I'll show how I might analyse that and look at it step by step. Remember, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. If you don't do your, your homework on the piece, then your students will probably struggle to learn the piece so that they can play it confidently, expressively, fluently and musically. Thank you so much for watching today and have fun with that. Bye bye for now.